Hey everyone, Kelsey here and welcome back to GAL. Today I have the MacBook Pro M1 Max brand new in front of me, unopened. I haven't even tested it yet. This video is going to be a testing video to see if it's worth the upgrade. So I will be testing playback speed. I'll be testing rendering and coding for 4K and 8K footage as well as testing different plugins. So for example, if you've ever used Flickr Free or Noise Remover, I'm really curious to see how the M1 chip handles those plugins. And a lot of you guys asked me to test motion graphics templates, Mogrit files. And today's sponsor, which is perfect, is Envato Elements. And I use a ton of Mogrits from Elements. So I'll be dragging and dropping those Mogrits inside of the M1 Max Premiere Pro timeline to see how they perform. If you're interested in trying out Envato Elements, you can use my link below to get 70% off your first month. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open this up and start the testing. <gasps> Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. All right, so here we have three different laptops. My MacBook Pro from 2017, the M1 Max, and the Dell Precision 7550. So first test is with 4K footage. So the effects that I added is an eight millimeter film frame, a film converts, film grain color filter, as well as some seamless transitions and to add to that, I also added sound. And all of these tracks are from Epidemic Sound. If you have not tried Epidemic Sound yet, it is seriously a great place for filmmakers to find sound. It's unlimited. You don't have to worry about any copyright issues. And if you're interested in trying it out, I have a 30 day free trial just down below. To do the testing, I have the console panel opened up and the console will actually tell you how many frames are being dropped during the playback. And to open up the console, just press command function F12 or control function F12 on a PC. All right, let's run the first test with the 4K playback right now. The MacBook Pro 2017 had 485 frames dropped out of 721. The M1 Max had 481 dropped, which is surprising. And the Dell had just 467. So now let's lower the playback resolution to a quarter. So the results at a quarter resolution, the 2017 had 357 frames dropped. M1 Max had just 14 frames dropped and the Dell had zero. So now let's go into render speed. So actually rendering out all of the effects. Let's see how long it takes on each different computer. The MacBook Pro 2017 took 188 seconds. The M1 Max took 60 seconds and the Dell took 114 seconds. So as you see, the M1 Max is the winner here. But now let's go on to 8K footage. So here inside my timeline, I have this footage from Mock Filmmaker. It's 8K footage. My cameras don't shoot in 8K, so I use some of his footage and he made it available to everybody to use if you give a credit. If I turn off the visibility of the adjustment layer, you can see that the color grade is gone. It's ungraded. What I put on the adjustment layer is a basic input LUT. So if I go to basic correction, you can see that I have the Canon C-Log 2 to Rec 709 LUT. This is a free LUT and if you use a different camera pro Profile, I have a bunch of the free LUTs that you can download inside of my description box just down below. So I wanted to be able to add an adjustment layer to really show a realistic playback if you're going to be working with the .CRM profile, the Canon RAW Lite. So let's see the playback speed at full resolution 
on all three devices. This is 30 seconds of footage and let's start the test now. The 2017 MacBook Pro really struggled here. It had a playback of 899 dropped frames out of 901. And literally when I was watching it back with the 8K, it was stuck on the first frame during the entire playback. I couldn't even play it. It was almost like it was frozen. The M1 Max, however, had 814 frames dropped, but you could see it playing back and it was working. It's still not great because most of the frames were being dropped. And the Dell, I couldn't even finish it because it was just, stuttering back and forth, so it really struggled. So if you need to edit 8K.CRM files in your timeline, the 2017 MacBook Pro isn't gonna cut it, this Dell isn't gonna cut it, the M1 Max with full res, it's not possible for smooth playback, but if you lower the resolution to a quarter, there's zero frames drop. So if you're okay with editing at a quarter resolution, 8K footage with a grade, it's smooth as butter. So I did a little bit more research because I was a little bit disappointed at why the M1 Max couldn't play back in full res the 8K footage. Well, it turns out that it's related to the .CRM format. If you export all of the .CRM files into a ProRes file, for example, it's smooth as butter. So for example here, I have the 8K ProRes timeline here with the same grade put on top and I'm putting it back at full res. And if I play it back on the M1 Max, it's there's zero frames drop. So it's just about the file format. So this is why I recommend, if you can in your camera, shooting in a ProRes codec, if you're going to be editing on the M1 Max. But if you cannot shoot in ProRes, what you can do is you can use Adobe Media Encoder and drag all of the .CRM files and export it as ProRes. And with the Video Effects tab, you can apply an input LUT. So that way you can export it as Rec. 709 already and you can in import it into your timeline and it's good to go. All right, so the next test is Motion Graphics Templates Mogurt Files. I specifically chose a typography motion graphics template that has a lot of effects laid on it. Usually these animated typographies take a long time to render. So the pack that I got it from was from Envato Elements. Remember, as I said in the beginning, if you're interested in elements, you can get 70% off your first month and you can literally download as much as you want and there's a ton of Mogurt packs there. So the one that I'm using is called Typography 99. So I'm just going to drag and drop this into the timeline and select keep existing settings. And then I need to scale it to frame because right now it's scaled at 1080p, which is a lower resolution. So I'm going to type in the resolution here, 3840, which is the width and 2160, which is the height. So that's the ultra HD resolution. So now I can go in and make some edits. You can update the colors if you want to. I'm just going to update the text to Premiere Gal. There we go. And now let's render it out to see which one is the fastest. To render a four second Mogurt on the 2017 MacBook Pro, it took 178 seconds. On the M1 Max, it took 52 seconds. And on the Dell Precision, it took 88 seconds. If you like to use Mogurts, the M1 Max and the Mogurt performance is fantastic. So before we go into the next test with the plugins, I want to show you my desk setup with my 40 inch Dell Curve monitor. And what's really cool is they just came out with an update to the Dell Display Manager. And if you open it up, you can change the color mode, easy arrange so you can easily arrange your windows. If I click on a window, I can put it into one of these frames. So I'm gonna put it in the vertical frame here. Now I have a split screen between After Effects and Premiere Pro. If you're interested in trying out this Dell monitor, I put a link just down below that you can check it out from b &H Photo or Amazon. The next test is warp stabilization. So to apply a warp stabilizer, just go to effects and search for warp 
and then you'll find warp stabilizer underneath the stort. Drag and drop it onto the clip and then it will analyze the background and then it will stabilize the clip. So the analysis time is what we're looking at here. So let's apply it to all three different computers and let's look at the analysis time. So the MacBook Pro 2017 took 7.78 seconds. For the M1 Max, it took 3.8 eight seconds. For the Dell, it was 6.6 .6 seconds. So just by looking at the results, you can see the M1 Max is far superior. So if you end up using Warp Stabilizer a lot, you should go with the M1 Max. Now let's move on to the next effect, the Flicker Fixer. If you've ever shot any video where there's a light in the background and it's flickering, you can use a plugin by Boris FX called Flicker Fixer. To apply it to your footage, you can go to Effects and search for Flicker Fixer after you've installed Boris FX Continuum. So let's go ahead and drag this onto our clip. Because the flicker kind of affects the entire frame, I'm going to go down and change it from frame analysis to temporal smooth YCC. And then underneath temporal smoothing, I'm going to smoothen it out a little bit more and increase the maximum frames to five. So if we try to play this back, it's gonna be hard to see the result because there's a lot of frames being dropped as we do that. So we need to render it out. And this is what I'm curious about, which computer performs the best with the Flickr Fixer. So let's hit return and enter on each device and let's see who performs the best. The MacBook Pro 2017 took 178 seconds and the M1 Max just took 62 seconds and the Dell 152 seconds while the M1 Max continues to dominate. The next test is inside of After Effects, the Roto Brush tool. So here inside of After Effects, I have this break dancer clip here and all I'm going to do is use the rotobrush tool to rotoscope him out. And what I'm curious to test is the speed of the analysis of actually rendering out the entire roto because that varies computer to computer. So to do the rotoscoping, you're going to double click on the clip and then from the layer tab, you can click on the rotobrush tool. So I'm just going to quickly select the subject to get the roto outline around him and we will see which one renders the fastest. one minute and 57 seconds for the 2017 MacBook Pro, 35 seconds for M1 Max, and a record-breaking 15 seconds on the Dell, which was very surprising. So those are all the essential tests that I did on all the machines to confirm that the M1 Max is living up to all the hype that is around this new MacBook Pro. I really think that this is the future of editing. Another question I got from you was the difference between the M1 Pro chip in the M1 Max chip. I was not able to get my hands on an M1 Pro chip tester unit, but I was able to sit down with Apple and they told me the difference between them. The M1 Pro chip and the M1 Max chip, while they have the same CPU performance, the M1 Max has two times the GPU performance, so it's gonna be faster. And secondly, the M1 Pro can only go up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. So with the M1 Max, you can already get more lanes in your highway with more RAM with the 64 gigabyte option. So if you're a multitasker and you like to have multiple programs open, such as Photoshop, After Effects, Premiere Pro, um, other creative tools open all at the same time while you're doing emails, the M1 Max is gonna have a far greater performance for you. But that's all for today's video. And if you like this style of testing videos on this channel, just give this video a thumbs up and be sure to leave a comment below if you have any other questions about my experience editing with the M1 Max and I'd be happy to respond. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use.